Uh, call the meeting to order. This is the meeting of the Hamden Board of Selectmen and Board of Health being held in Townhouse Auditorium, April 11, 2022, at 6 p.m. This meeting is being conducted in person and remotely using video tech conferencing technology as authorized by Governor Baker's uh, signature of the latest bill to extend it to July 15, 2022. Please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Is anyone recording the meeting other than ourselves? Uh, before I begin the meeting, I'd like to uh, point out that today, this week is National Emergency Re uh, Dispatchers Week in recognition of the uh, men and women who service our dispatch. Uh, and I want to thank them for their service, not only to the town of Hammond, but to the town of Wilbraham. In many respects, they're the first first responders. When you call, that's who you get. And then they get a hold of the fire department or police department. And I want to thank them for their, Anthony, if you'd pass it along to them, I see you there. If you, I thank them for their service. Uh, their their professionalism and their compassion on Southern calls. We really appreciate it. Thank you. No problem. Thank you for letting us serve you. We appreciate it. Uh, we have minutes, uh, March 21st, Make a motion to approve minutes for March 21st, 2022. Um, second. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Bear with me when I hear it. Jim, under the landfill thing on Thursday, so look at that. Just I'm not sure what John, comma, project on landfill, comma, in the next month. It's almost like that was your note, and you have left it in the note. Got it. I'll make a note. All right. Thank you. Anything else on that? All right. All right. Great. Good. The uh, next item on our agenda is a uh, dangerous dog hearing under Chapter 140, Section 157. Uh, we first begin by introducing John Flynn and Don Davenport, Greg Rickers. Greg, Greg, and uh, this. And uh, um, who are you? I'm sorry. Bob. Oh, Bob Markle. <laughs> Bob, Bob Markle. Bob Markin? Markle. M-A-R-K-E-L. Yeah. M-A-R-K-E-L. Thank you. Mm -hmm. nice to meet you. Uh, under under the chapter 140 section 157 <clears throat> we're responding to a complaint regarding the, the dog and we can do one of three things we can find the complaints unsubstantiated in order of dismissal we could find the dog a nuisance dog and uh, order certain remedies or we could find the dog a dangerous dog and there's additional remedies that go along with that uh shall you want to come up <clears throat> First, before we begin, I want to swear everybody in as a witness. So uh, you solemnly swear that the testimony you are about to give at this hearing shall be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth under the pains and penalty of perjury. Okay. Shelly, you want to take a point? I'm me. Hi, Hi Shelly. Um, Steve Haskins um, called me about uh, last May, 
and he said that he was sick of um, Ann's dogs coming into his yard and killed his, his she, he said they killed three of his chickens. And once he had been paid for uh, one of the dogs to be sutured up, his dog was tied up on a run. And her two dogs came over and beat him up. So, but it's been, I mean, I try to wrap it down and I see him down there. You know, and I've talked to him a few times about it. So, you know. And in the letter you referred to talking to my deceased husband. Oh, yes, I did. But I don't, I don't know about that. Oh, no, I've talked to him quite a few times. Okay, but it, we didn't even have one of the dogs. Oh, no, you didn't want just one right. minute. Yeah. Yeah. Just one minute. That had nothing to do with Steve Haskins, correct? No, they were just those before Steve even complained. Okay. Yeah. In the end, you sent a you sent a letter. If you don't mind, I'll read it. Please. Uh, dear Mr. Davenport, please accept this as my written response to your letter to me dated March 29, 2022, concerning complaint over my pet dog. I want to be a good dog owner and to maintain proper relationships with my neighbors. And accordingly, I've made the following changes in order to better control my dogs. As to mitigation or remedial action, I'm taking the following good faith measures. I have hired a dog sitter and walker in order to care for the dogs every day while I'm at work during the day. I have also placed the dogs on proper leash and two long lead tethers that allow the dogs to <coughs> run a short distance but remain under, my, under control. I am also in the process of installing an invisible electric fence in order to keep the dogs on my property and away from the neighbor's property. As to context contextual background, I have also spoken with my neighbor in the past about the incident concerning a chicken that was killed approximately a year ago. At that time, my neighbors did not appear to be overly upset and I offered to make restitution. My relationship with my neighbors and community is important to me and I would like it to return to it being cordial and normal. Accordingly, I am making good faith efforts to cooperate with the town and to properly control my pets on my 30 acre property and keep them away from the neighbor's property. Based upon the above measures being taken, I request that the complaint be dismissed. Thank you for your consideration, Ann Thomas. Steve that's on there, that's, is that Steve Haskin? There's a Steve on there. Yeah. Yes. Hello. Hi. I'm Hi. Almost, you heard the oath and you've agreed to it. Yes. Well, do you have anything to add? No, I just, you know, she opens the door at seven in the morning and lets them out and they end up in my yard. She she has 30 acres, which is great, but the dogs don't know where the property line is. So, you know, my dog's tied up 24 seven when it's outside. When I walk my dog, it's on a leash. She should at least have the courtesy and do the same thing, not just opening the door and let them out. This has been, this has been ongoing for years. It's just that it's to the point now where Apparently, she's going to maybe start doing something about it now. I heard the letter I wrote, I read. Yeah, it just seems like she's going to try to do everything at once, and that's great. If she keeps her dogs on her property, that's fine. But as of the last six years that they've been here, the dogs are loose all the time. So I guess something's going to change by her having a walker and a, a, a invisible fence put up. Are, are they uh, are the dogs loose all, at all times of day or just in the morning or? I think she let, must let them out before she goes to work and then they just kind of run the neighborhood until they come home. So they, they've been, I've sent photos of the dog to uh, Shelly when they've been in my yard. So it's, it, it has been different times of the day. Right now, we don't have livestock anymore because of the roaming dogs. They go right into the chicken coop and grab the chickens and take off with them. Uh, it, it, to it, that. Go ahead. My yes, understanding David. is there's no chicken coop. The, the, they were free range chickens. So I they're apologize, my, I apologize but my dog, you know, dogs go after, it's not livestock, first of all, they're chickens. They're not cows or lambs or goats. I just want to make that clear because it refers to livestock here. Um, I also want to note that Steve Haskins used to be very good friends with my husband. 
And we had a very cordial relationship for many, many years. Mm -hmm. My husband died very suddenly. I found him dead when I came home from work. The first people I called were the Haskins to come and help. And I talked to Shelly. Sometimes I get emotional because he was home. He worked at home. And he, he was the dog sitter, okay? When he first died, I was at loss. I was at a huge loss. Steve helped me immensely, he and his wife. So they've been really good neighbors to me. I went over a year ago when I heard about the chicken, I offered a gift basket. I offered a gift certificate to a restaurant. I was profusely, profusely sad about what had happened. And I also said I would pay for the chicken. And at the time, Steve's wife said, we don't hold grudges. So you don't need to pay for the chicken. They're $7 online. So I accept full responsibility and I will do something about this. But I think it's important to know some of the context. You used to bring Steve, be honest. You used to come to my house. Your dogs were on my property. Your dogs came to my house untethered on my property. I never complained because the dogs enjoyed each other's company. Okay, so I don't know what happened within the last year, but it's beyond, I understand where you're coming from, but for this to get to this point, it's very, very difficult for me. Knowing the relationship that you had with my dead husband and it's just beyond. So I will move forward. I will do the right thing. You have my word, but I don't want to have, like, I live in this town. I live by myself in this town mm -hmm. and it's not easy. Kelly, you see that I have a good word. Yes. And you think, you think these are good remedial steps? Oh yeah. Okay. Yeah. There a time frame that you would attach to and say, let's get it. How long do you think you before you get all that? Yeah. I've done everything you done except for the fence. Because I also want to note these are expenses yeah. that I have to pay for. It. It's all new expenses for yeah. me. I didn't used to have to pay for them. So invisible fences are expensive. I have an estimate, they come out. I just have to figure out how I'm going to pay for that. But and they're not going to be loose, so you, you don't the, have to worry about that. And you have the dog sitter now? Yes, she comes every afternoon. And it's two dogs, you said? Two dogs. And what, what are their breeds again? They're mixed breeds. They're both rescues. The one, when I mentioned this letter to my dog sitter, Penny is her name. Steve's always, he's called her crazy when he's been to my house. She's scared of her own shadow. And the dog sitter had said that she was abused tremendously. She was born in Puerto Rico. She was... I'm sure someone tried to kill her because she's the afraid of her own shadow. Dog? The dog. Is this the new dog or the old the dog? The new dog. The old dog is like mellow as can be. But the new dog is scared. She's scared to death. And now she saw her father die. I mean, she was in the house with him when he died. I mean, you can't, he's gone. I mean, it's there was a lot, there were a lot of changes in her life since she's been. Are they and, at all when they're all and she's also on medication. I have her on medication that the vet prescribed. She's given medication twice a day to help with her anxiety. Mm -hmm. She's a beautiful dog. She's a sweet dog. She's just scared of her own shadow. So they are tethered. They're on, I won't leave them outside unless they're on a leash or on this lead that Shelly recommended. I, and I, I think leave. that's the key thing. I mean, you do have a lot, substantial amount of property and you know, the dogs should be able to use your property. But when they cross those boundary lines to somebody else's livestock, and that's that's the concern that we want to make sure we're, we're I understand. ready. So. But I just also want you to know, I mean, these um, I know they're serious when a dog is dangerous. I understand that. I can understand where you're coming from when you hear that. I saw something in the newspaper about another dog um, that they were talking about euthanizing. I mean, I'm a dog lover. I love dogs. I love animals. My husband loved them more than I did. Um, and like I said, I've always had rescues because they need good homes. Mm -hmm. So when we bought the property, we felt like this will be great for our dogs. And you're right, we can't let them loose. I get it. Mm -hmm. um, so you're absolutely right, Craig. As long as we're making steps to, yeah, I, I think that, that's what we're here for. We're looking for the resolution. I think you've got some good ideas to move forward and you know, so the, the neighbor doesn't have the, so, the problem. 
So I would I would propose that we that we're going to implement these things that we have, mm -hmm. and that we continue it for a month and just just have Shelley come in and review where we are. Thank you. Do you think it's reasonable that a month in a month you'd have the invisible fence up or or we could just check in on the progress, you know? Yeah, I I don't know. I mean, if the dogs are on leashes, I'm not sure I need the invisible fence. I mean, the invisible fence would be for my convenience so that mm -hmm. I can let them run on the right. beautiful property. Mm -hmm. You know, that's do you have a, a, a lead out there anywhere or a, a, a kennel of some sort? I put in two leads okay. for How both are, dogs. How big are the leads? Are they like 100 foot runs or are they? They're not 100 no. feet. They're. I mean, they're long. Okay. Both behind the house, right? Yes. Yeah. And if you've seen the property, it's very hard to fence the property yeah. because sure. the river runs through it. Mm. It's mostly woods. Mm. So it's, it's very hard. I mean, my brother came from Minneapolis. And he was trying to help me figure out like a fence situation, but um, it's also not a flat surface. So, mm -hmm. but I, I think um, I need to really look at the right. the now, estimate of the invisible fence. Do the dogs have any training? Have you gone to training with them, or was your husband the one that was? My husband trained them. Your husband trained them. He, he did the best. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, he he trained them. I mean, when we first got Penny, we didn't think we were going to be able to keep her because she was so nervous. She wouldn't, she would just cower in a corner. She wouldn't eat, but he got her right. now, to be do, sociable. Do the dogs respond to you differently than they did your husband? No, so they love me. I mean, they're, they'll listen they to sleep you with me every night. They're my that. protectors. They, you know. Right, I understand that. But I just want to make sure that they're listening to your commands. You know, you said your husband was the one that trained them. So I wasn't sure if he was the one that gave them all the commands. But I want to make sure that you're comfortable giving the dog the commands and they do this thing, correct? They do. Um, Georgia will do anything. Penny will come now when I call her. She comes right away. She runs to meet me. Um, um, I've just had a, you know, I, I'm, like I said, I'm committed to, to whatever I need to do. I just, you know, it's unfortunate that I'm here, but I will do everything I need to do. Steve? Is that a, a reasonable thing for now? Yes, that's all I ask that, you know, she tries to have control of the dog. I don't blame the dogs. It's, you know, it's the owner, you know, you let the dog out in the morning and it's going to run around. Okay, so we'll, we'll continue it for a, a month. We'll just check in with you then or have Shelly check in, okay? Okay, so Shelly's going to check in with you, yeah. with me. Yes. Okay. All right, that sounds good. Thank you very much. Thank I appreciate you. your time. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Have that. a good meeting. Next item on the agenda is a. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Steve. Thank you. Thanks, uh, Shelley. Hold position. Hold position on Bennett Road. So, do um, we have a motion to? Can just give us a motion to continue that hearing? A oh, motion to continue the dog hearing for one month. Second. All in favor. All right. All right. Going to open the other hearing for the. This is the hearing for the full position on some street somewhere in Hamden. <laughs> oh yeah, Bennett Road. The Great Street. I still live there. Yeah. There's a pull on a on the Bennett Road in Hamden, and where is it going to be? Just it's going to be. An anchor is yeah. an anchor at Bennett Road beginning at a point 5,000 feet. 5,000, that's a mile. 5,000 feet east of the center line of the intersection of Glendale Road. Conviction insufficient guiding of the existing infrastructure. Yes, yeah, so this is Ken Kriegel for National Grid and the poles will cross from property number 167. There's a primary service that goes in there and the poles being pulled that direction. I believe there was a tree guy at one point in it. I think the tree died and it's taken down. Mm -hmm. So this is Bennett or London? Bennett. Bennett. So this is actually a little further west than the one your your associate was in for about a week ago. Okay. Yes. There's been a few years ago. I was very separate. But. Uh, yes. <laughs> but so you guys were filled built by the out. hour or something. Jesus. So my one concern, it's almost the same thing. Has this gone past the highway superintendent? 
Yes. Don has that information. Oh. Both highway and uh, the police chief. Oh, you do? Signed oh, you do. All positional Scott Family Police Chief. Yes, sir. <laughs> My knee. The poll's okay. The poll locations are fine uh, for yeah, my right opinion. Yeah, that's where I was. Whenever they have them directly across from each other, yes. like, uh, you we'll get really attempt to keep the road as wide as possible or as wide as possible as we can. <clears throat> So with recommendation of the police chief, which is the traffic traffic study officer, and the uh, highway superintendent make a motion to approve the request. Second. In favor? Aye. Aye. Open and drive bar. It's mileage problem. Problem. Company car. No mileage problem. I'm sure they cover your head. Take care of this. Thank you for coming in. Okay. Next time, I'd like to see a big, how big a poll is. We get a look at it. Maybe that's wrong to put it to where it's going. We got it. We got it. Got it. We're good. All right. So, sign this. Sign that. Sign this. I'm sorry, there's three of these to sign? Yes, National Grid, Horizon, and us. I land. I understand you don't get to drive a big truck for at least two years, right? All side. No. Okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. <laughs> We don't, we don't have any bills to sign. So. No, I. That's the free week. I think, yeah, I think Jane took care of that. Yeah. Yeah. All the yeah. stuff last week. Yeah. All right, the next item on our agenda is firefighter candidate Landon Gursky. What up? Uh, <laughs> so tonight, um, I brought forth a probationary firefighter candidate. For the call fire department, fire department. Um, his name is Landon Gursky. He lives in town on Cedar Oak, which is about two miles from the station, which is really nice and close. Um, he'll go through our training program. Um, I know you've heard his spiel before, so I don't know if you want me to go through it again or not. Yes. So once he joins our um, department, he'll go through our training. We'll have a binder that needs to get checked off certain steps that he has to meet before he can be qualified or eligible to go to the call um, recruit um, or call volunteer academy. And he'll also be able to grab a EMT class as well. So Landon, in school, working? Uh, right now I'm in school at Western Linden University, a full-time student. And I have a part-time job with very flexible hours. What are you doing? You're studying at school? Uh, I'm in here. Mm -hmm. Are you over at the Jerry Ray Post? Yeah. yeah. Is your job close by? Not the only guy. Sign from yeah. 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 It's not something you would leave to come to a, a call, right? Uh, it's, it's a little far out. A little far out. I'm not there too much, but why do you why do you want to join the fire department? Well, I'm not real sure. It's just something I've wanted to do for a while. I've always been interested in it, and uh, let's do volunteer work. I thought uh, starting so we can. I think it's good that you uh, want to give back to your community and help out the best way possible. And, uh, I think it's a, a good opportunity. So with that, I'll make a motion to appoint. 
Landon Gursky to the role of probationary firefighter under Chief Bloom's guidance. Subject to all, uh, all of the firefighter certification status. Second that motion. You're in favor? Aye. Aye. There you go. Welcome aboard. I'm sorry to put you through that ring. <laughs> what are the latest, latest ARPA numbers if you decide to add something? For police or fire. Congratulations. There's nothing. Congratulations uh, on the grant, Chief. Want to try it out on somebody? Do the Yeah. Well, yeah. We I don't know when when it's coming or anything, but um, it was notified that yeah we were getting one. Mm -hmm. Police radio request. Yes, sir. That's me. So back in January, um, when Marcus Communications came out to. Um, finish up getting our, our radio system after our digital service put in place. Um, they found that uh, two of the cruisers, the radios, which was in car three and four, two brand new cars, radios, um, had some problems with the updates. They wouldn't allow it to update. So um, they went back to Marcus, met with technicians, uh, were able to get software into these two particular radios. All the other radios and all the cruisers accepted the updates were compatible with moving forward. And so when they went back, they were able to make it work and push it through, but they found one of the radios uh, had some corrosion to it. Um, not sure why, maybe moisture. Um, there were problems on research for these two radios about seven years ago. They were purchased when they came out of warranty. Um, there was obsolete parts already on the, on the, on the, on the radio and they couldn't uh, take it out of service. So they those two particular radios were being used for, one was the sergeant's cruiser and one was the uh, cruiser that we used for the uh, reserve officers. It wasn't used all that often. Um, the scan mode would uh, not work. And then also the channel would just pop out when, uh, when um, maybe being called. So it became a, created a, a safety issue, but the officers were made aware of it and it continued. So I just became aware of that issue. Um, but in January, when, like I said, they were doing the updates, they found that these two radios are in need of replacement for any further updates. Right now they work, they're in the cruisers and, and they're, they're okay. Um, but they're not going to accept because of the technology being older, any new updates as we move forward, they're gonna need newer updates. So um, I had uh, sent an email um, to um, Bob in around January asking possibly maybe if ARPA funds or something to that effect with these radios. Um, and then I, I just, again, um, went back and looked. Um, we missed with the new radios being put into new cruisers. So new cruisers came through, the radios went fine. Uh, still working okay, but um, I don't want to take a chance of going down into two new cruisers with two radios that may go down, and we got to pull them out of service. And then, so I was hoping to uh, ask for two new radios and have them installed ASAP and- How, how come these weren't upgraded in the, um, the system update we had? That was not part of the project. No. No. The cruiser radios were not part of the project. Beyond, uh, it's in the contract. Excuse me? It's in the contract. Not the, it. Uh, it says, under the scope of the agreement, that the vendor will install new mobile radios in all customer police department and fire department vehicles. Uh, that, that'd be new to me, and I can I can look into that further. But as far as I know, um, the portion of the contract that I had didn't have... Um, didn't have anything about the mobile radio and... Um, this, is, this is the contract that's on. That we have copies of. Okay. So I was just, I was, I was reading it. I'm like, because I, I thought everything got replaced. I know we got all, what, all new mobiles, right? All new portables. Got portables, correct. And I, I, and I thought, you know, reading this, it said that was part of it. So I was like, as far as I know, like, why no, can't we it, go to Marcus and be like, hey, you guys are supposed to do it? Yeah, no. And, and, and Mike Kane is very, very close to this project and very close to the project with, with Chief Farnsworth. Mm -hmm. um, those were not, and, and those were not items to be replaced. Yeah. In the so can we get clarification on that? Because yeah. I'd like I mean, to see I, I looked and that, and that, I mean, I can get clarification, absolutely. 
Yeah. Um, but when I submitted the uh, when I submitted the um, uh, quote back in January, and then again, um, they know they know our contract, and I would have hoped so, that they would have told me. This is just <laughs> sure, sure, clarification. This is not a signed contract. This is on our one draft. So okay. I don't know if things change, but I don't have any other versions to go off of. All right. So, so I do have I do have um, the proposal that was signed. Well, actually, this was actually the proposal that was sent forward through September 9, 2019. Yeah. 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 We'll go back to the date here. It, it just says to 2019 because it's not dated. It's not a signed copy. So I don't okay. actually have the handwriting on the scanned copy here. But it was, yeah. an, it was a whole packet, I think, from Chief Farnsworth at the time. Right, there was a whole packet. Yeah, there was yeah. a police multi-mobile radio. There was police portable radios. But the radio for the cruisers, I didn't see that in here when I was looking through it earlier. Right. Um, so I saw two different things. I saw a, a supplied list, but then I see the verbiage in the actual contract that says they're replacing it. So that's where I'm like, I'll, I'll find out. So if it's in the contract that they're replacing it, but it's not on the, the parts list. I don't, I don't. I don't know if there's a, a cross there. So as far as far as I know, um, through the person that was closest to the project, and then also Marcus, that they they were not to replace the uh, cruiser. Yeah. They I, mean, it, it, I, I could I could send this to you if you want to see it. That's <laughs> fine. That you can you can send it to me. Sure, I can, and I can uh, communicate with them. Maybe but that's not signed. Out. This is not a signed copy, so that's that could be an issue. So this is the only copy I could find on our on our one drive under police department and, and unfortunately i have a folder full of stuff that yeah. i've been going through and trying to locate myself and uh, i did not see anything about the mobile radios and that's why i did submit and ask for a quote from them right and i would have hoped doing all the work that they did for us and, and uh, they would have said by the way that's covered right well that's my question I'm like <laughs> is this is this covered so but uh um, we, we could check I've on that i've got a signed okay. you have a signed copy mm -hmm. Is it on the OneDrive or is it still? Okay. No, I have it, but I'll send it. So I can, I can, I can. You can send that to me. Yeah, yeah. Sure. And then I can just verify what they might have. But um, I don't know. Of, of, uh, yeah. So yeah, it was, it was a whole packet of things, mm -hmm. right? Right. Yeah. Um, and on that topic, though, we just paid out Marcus what, and it was in our warrant this week. Fifty-three thousand was the, was that their final? That would be their final payment, correct? So according to our the treasurer, we have still. Twenty-one thousand left in contingency. Okay, I, I didn't know what the contingency was. So maybe we can tap into that okay. instead of trying to pull our funds. That's fine. I, I do know that. Um, um, you know, that, that's sure. That's fine. Sure. And we have forty-two thousand in police and fire communications. That was that was for the tower. That's for the, the towers. For the towers. And the towers only in the twenty-four thousand dollars okay. so we'll have we'll end up with thirty-six thousand in there. So okay. we should be able to do something there. So between that and Marcus contingent, and they're going to get them for you're going to get them for free anyhow for your contract. <laughs> <laughs> um, they, Worst they, case they, scenario, we, we have money to pay for it. They, 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 they did. Those. They did give us a good deal, from my understanding. But um, I will go back and uh, see uh, what they might have and be able to supply me. But what I I, I did not find anything at all in the paperwork that I had that was left. On um, those cruiser radios. Matter of fact, those uh, two radios, like I said, were uh, about seven years old. When are you going to get those cars detailed? No. Cleaned? No, no, no. no. Details. details. Oh, details. Oh, details. Uh, it's, it's on order. Um, I'm waiting for a docking station for the computer inside, which is still on order. As we know, parts and everything come. I mean, I'm lucky to have gotten the cars. So everything is in it except for a docking station and the details on the outside. Uh, expectation. Hopefully within the next step, uh, the docking was not compatible with the old one. No, nothing was compatible with the old one. From the docking station. Because I'm getting very it's tired of having to slow down every time I see the, an unmarked Tahoe. You know what I mean? <laughs> I'm not quite sure if it's one of you guys or not. So it is one of this is this Tahoe. <laughs> our our the, the cruiser I drive, the cruiser detective drives are unmarked Tahoes. No, 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 the new ones. Oh, the new ones are the explorers. Yeah, explorers. Right. Right. Yeah. I don't know what dark parts. <laughs> I don't know. It's it's nice. Nice. I don't know. I'll leave it that way, I think. It's a Tesla bike. So we do have the money there. Yeah. Okay, thank you. All right. What's your radio story? Um, well, we met um, at the police department with Marcus. Um, Craig Rivis was there. Uh, highway was there. Um, Chief was there. 
we are discussing radios, where we were at with the radios, some of my concerns um, with our system. In town, it works very well. Um, that's part of our contract was in town. No fault of Marcus um, since this contract was awarded and the, and the work started and the pandemic hit. It took a little bit longer than we all wanted it to. But in that meantime, we regionalized Wolverham, East on Metal regionalized Westcom, Munson is. Um, so now we lost our communications that we once had with our neighboring communities. Um, so my biggest thing for that meeting, for me, for the fire department, um, for the town was to how can we rectify that problem with uh, better communications. So um, they came up with some answers. I guess we can elaborate our portable radios that we currently have, our new ones that were part of this project into um, accepting higher frequencies and radios that Westcom is currently programmed at and that Wolverham is currently programmed at. It's, um, um, I'm not, I know Tony could, could uh, speak a world of radio mm -hmm. talk at us. But from what I understand is we need to purchase um, basically like hardware trunks, they call them, to go into our portable radios, and then they get programmed. It allows it to be programmed to a higher frequency to allow us to be able to talk. Oh, an upgrade. Other communities. Okay. Is it how much per licensing rate? upgrade? Licensing so upgrade. So we have a hardware, is the hardware trunk only software or yeah. no hardware component to it? Right. Ignore the word hardware. Well, it's. <laughs> Yeah, it, it's software program. It's provisioning, so they have to enter a code in provisions the radio, so they can access different trunking and different megahertz. So, it's so a tri -band. You're unlocking the potential. Yes, yes. You're, so you're, we could have done yeah. this, but they of course want to sell you every option down the road. Uh, again, Ballpark. when when this was when we went through and priced out mm -hmm. the, oh, yeah. the radio communication, none of this was in the works. Mm -hmm. I mean, Westcom we was, regionally, but yeah. Westcom didn't change our radios till last year. So. Mm -hmm. They, you know, so everything was, I, you know, it, it happened, but what the end game is, we're trying to get the best uh, mm -hmm. communication that we can with our neighbors. It's growth. Well, how much per radio? Well, we have seven officers' radios. That's what the quote was for. Um, I could break it down per no, radio. Total. I think it's like, what, 17? 17 and change? Yeah, 17,000. I think it's 30, uh, I have that number if you want it. 13,231. What is it? Tony. What is it, Tony? Uh, for the inc uh, trunking key and the 800 megahertz upgrade, uh, altogether it's 17,679.74. And that's for seven uh, portable radios. And I can tell you that I had one of them upgraded, one Motorola radio upgraded in Wilbraham, and it was significantly more than having one Harris radio upgraded. So uh, looking at these figures, everything here is, is uh, in tow with what uh, what needs to be done. So it's a lot less than a Motorola radio, I can tell you that. We have all Harris radios? Mm -hmm. Yes, we have all Harris radios. Can you talk about that extra money from the other projects? Would yeah. that be applicable to you store this or like the tower up, things like that? Yeah, it's because it's, it's, right. it's, it's all it's communication. Yeah. It's fire and police communication. So therefore, right. and we should have all 36,000. Right. You know, you know he's got to go to town meeting or yeah, he's got fire department. He's got eight thousand to start for the normal equipment. Something in the tower, right? He's got thirty-six thousand in the tower. Stupid. That's clean. And consistent. What? That's clean and consistent. Yeah. First. And is there anything else that jumps out of you or Tony? Is there anything that like, yeah, you know, is this a precursor or something else? Nope. So this is uh this would bring the seven portable radios that the fire department has for their uh, officers, lieutenants, captains, chief, and deputy chief. They would bring them up to snuff for uh, communication throughout the whole Commonwealth. Um, the 800 megahertz add-on is for Wilbraham. Uh, Wilbraham recently implemented a fire ground crossband repeater. Uh, when Wilbraham is on a call of a, a fire call, they um, talk on their fire ground and it's repeated over an 800 megahertz uh, channel. 
So that channel will be able to be added to the Hamden uh, portable radio. So if Hamden comes up to Wilbraham, they can listen and talk back uh, on the right directly on the Fireground channel. They don't have to wait until they get to the scene or have us patch them in. They'll be able to actually listen and talk back uh, if they're needed. And the, the trunking upgrade will also allow um, Westcom to program the portable radios, the seven portable radios. So when they go to mutual aid for East Longmeadow, they can actually hear him and fire can actually hear what's going on. And again, we wouldn't have to patch it through at the dispatch center and um, Hamden can talk back. And then once they go on the fire ground at the fire scene, they'll be able to communicate with uh, the command center there and also the other firefighters that are on scene. I think it's a good idea for public safety, you know, especially with, with the, uh, the mutual aid calls and everything else expands a geographical area of communications. So I'd recommend uh, that we do this upgrade and as the chair is suggesting, use the additional or the excess uh, radio communication funds to pay for it. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 All right. Got right. your radio. Nice. You didn't get yours. That's <laughs> He's, he's gonna go to the markets with an iron fist, right? Fire out so we're one. Thanks, gentlemen. All right, thanks. Thank you. Uh, ARPA, ARPA, ARPA. Oh, okay. This ARPA, is ARPA. I've just added back the uh, school capital, although that's not an exact figure. It's more than it's sixty thousand and change. I have to get the exact figure. It was ninety nine hundred sixty. 6960? No, 60,960. 960, yeah, right. Okay, um, and then uh, the telephone switches. Otherwise, it's uh, the same. Telephone you mean switches. Telephone, the telephone system we got from Here. Valley? Very different. Sorry? Is this the system yes. we got from Valley? Yes. Okay, not switches. Um, otherwise, it's the same, and uh, I think so far, 218. I think the excavator is like 89 or something. Though. With the trailer and all, yeah. Yeah, it's, it's, yeah, it's, it's a, a, uh, yeah, there's another uh, eight, seven to eight thousand trail for the trailer. Tasers were like eighteen hundred each. They, well, the, with the tasers, the tasers they they were going to be what was it fifteen thousand? The tasers is thirty two two twenty five. Well, the tasers are forty six forty six eight forty six eight. The yeah. generator is thirty two. I'm sorry, the taser, that's, that's the fire department generator. So the tasers were going to be the 46 tasers eight. were going to be like um, the total was going to be like sixty thousand dollars because he was going to he was going to buy them, pay for them each year. Mm -hmm. And I asked him to check to see if he bought it for five years, get the thing for five oh, years, yeah. and we saved about fourteen thousand dollars longer. Because I figured after ARPA runs out in two years, we're gonna have to put it on the tax rate. But these are 10 tasers for about five grand a piece. More than that, it's a 12. I think they're, I want to say 12, but yeah. I don't know. I can look through them. Well, 12 for five years. Maybe mm -hmm. Is it the least? Is that how it works? I think so, yeah. Or, 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 or maybe it's a. Uh, so this covers us for the five years. Mm -hmm. It covers us for the five years. So right, right, right. And it doesn't go in tax rate. Yeah, say fourteen thousand dollars. Oh, I agree. Of course, your kids, your kids, kids are going to pay yeah. for it down the road at some point. <laughs> like the CARES Act and all that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. uh, just another so note: I'm putting plug. in the uh, the application for the fiber optic uh, broadband grant, mm -hmm. and also I think I I passed out to you earlier. The AED grant that we got yeah, yeah, that yeah. Uh, will upgrade one device for up to twenty five hundred dollars. Yeah. All right, we're good with this. Yeah. Yep. All right, Thanks. outdoor dining. Well, basically, it's the uh, the governor extended the last year's motion. Uh, there's opportunities in town, and I spoke to Mr. Connors at Casabella, and it's something we would like to continue to take advantage of. Again, restoration of business in the current environment. We have a letter. We have a letter in here also from Gary Weiner <clears throat> at the request of Mr. Semino. I reviewed the water usage at La Cachina restaurant for the last five years. Um, the review conducted determined the ability of a subsurface sewage disposal system 
to dispose of sewage due to 40 outdoor dining patio seats. Review of the usage, five years so the average usage is 12.42 gallons. Uh, the month of August 2020 at the highest water use was 1962. Daily water use was 2,900 gallons per day. It should be noted 2004 design required the size of leach field because of the factory system. It's my understanding that 40 outdoor patio seats will replace 36 based upon the water usage review and replacement of the seats. Uh, outdoor dining should have a minimal impact on the subsurface sewage disposal. Do we have to vote up to the seat? No, I think it's just a matter of uh, acknowledging the governor's order and allowing outdoor dining. I think so. Yeah, I think it's a good idea. Just policy. Yeah, that's fine. I need a motion for that. I'll motion for that. Uh, motion to extend outdoor dining for Governor Baker's extension through I think it's April 23. April 2023. Yeah. Second. All in favor? All in favor? Oh, the Board of Health, right? <laughs> I like how you said second. It's kind of quite a reason. I think he's pointing at you, though. He said. <laughs> An annual town meeting order. Uh, what is missing at this point uh, would be the community preservation committee's uh, recommendations. We have, uh, so we have a meeting scheduled for Wednesday night. Okay. Uh, and we have one proposal on our docket. Basically, housing authorities working with me okay. to bring forth a request. For appropriations, if you will. Okay. So, and at this point, that's it. I talked to Doug. We don't suspend yeah. any others. Is and I'm, I'm I'm going to put this on the agenda for next week to be executed. I mean, for you to sign. Right. The only thing I have left is the uh, enterprise fund numbers, which typically are yeah. not in the budget per right. se, more like an emotion. Yeah. Uh, at this point, we're seeing something very similar to last year with a request from. Uh, raise and appropriate yeah probably in the number of 10 there was a for whatever reason we had a quote for bags that was a certain amount of time mm -hmm. did not execute the order for the bags in time to uh, get the price and the price went up right. so yeah. yeah and there's some well, some well, discussion well, about the ordering of these uh, of these articles because uh i did move the citizen petition up, but it, it sort of got moved up in front of uh, financial items. And traditionally, yeah, yeah, heard yeah. feedback that traditionally, and I, I agree, you put all your financial orders articles first, and then the others. Uh, oftentimes, I think you see the citizen petition farther down in the war, sometimes last. And that's where we did it. And, it's, a, it's amazing. I think, Don, you recall the past couple of years, the article that has gotten the most discussion has been the CPA. Remember the uh, cemetery expense? Cemetery. And then, yeah, yeah. And then the uh, $10,000 discussion. It's, it's incredible. So, yeah, I had asked Bob to kind of organize and we'll put the financial things up front and then kind of like the special articles, like the municipal mm -hmm. life plan and that stuff in the middle. Mm -hmm. And then the traditional kind of housekeeping things, you know, transfers, assessors, yeah, right? actually, all that's on the outside. That kind of stuff. So we'll have it uh, rearranged and available to be signed uh, next meeting, next week. All right, uh, what do we got here? Correspondence, get some correspondence here. Correspondence. We have a letter from the VFW, oops, about the Royal Day Parade, inviting us to the Royal Day Parade. VFW. Oh, that one. Yeah. Yeah. Memorial Day Parade. Parade invitation. Let's see. Let me go in here. Uh, anyhow, there, there's a few other things in there. May 30th, 2022. Parade steps off at 10 a.m., beginning at St. Mary's Catholic Church, traditionally, and will travel down Main Street to the center of town. The memorial ceremony will be at 11 a.m., pending on the parade. Right, so we know that parade is coming, and, and that was our official invite. That was our official invite. So I don't remember ever seeing an invitation before. No, no. quite honestly. Pressure. But in your folders, there there are uh, copies of different correspondence. Brush your teeth and comb your hair today. 
John, yours about the uh, wells that you inquired with DEP. Oh, right. So, um, yeah, why would we? So, chatting with Becky about the senior center expansion, and we all had the question about the parking lot, et cetera. And that kind of got into the amount of land they had available. And she said, well, we still can't bring the parking lot out further because we have that well there. And the well was put in back in 16, 17, when there was a request from Great Horse to up the daily drop and not the annual drop. So DEP required them to do a hard pump test to see what the aquifer recharge rate would be. They asked for a well at the school location and a well at the senior center location, doing a and a couple of neighbors as well. So that was done. The permit was granted after gosh two years of work. Well, the and, amendment to the permit was granted to allow them to the daily just daily withdrawal, but yeah. not an annual increase. Right. So my question was, well, why is that well still there? Since that's kind of hamstringing our ability to use the full area at the senior center. So that's why I said back to DP, hey, can this well now be taken out? And the response was, yes, the one at the school has to stay, but the one at the senior center was a one-time just for the daily pump testing. Okay, I have two issues. Yeah. Number one, I was taken a little bit by surprise that you would reach out to DEP on an issue like that without checking with the board, particularly when they mentioned the Thornton Burgess wells, because those wells specifically in their in their uh right in their final decision mm -hmm. was that those wells are for testing nitrates and other chemicals that may go into the thornton burgess public water supply mm -hmm. so i don't think there should be any talk about taking those out and you know we know that one of the problems we have is we all have a tendency to do this is to reach out to someone without telling the other board members and that was kind of surprised to see DEP when it was talking about removing wells that are for testing water supply in town of Hamlet. So. Well, I don't say I agree with that, but I understand your concern. Well, why don't you agree with it? Because there wasn't a comment saying, hey, I'm taking out that well next week. There was a comment asking, what is the status of that current well? No. And they replied back to the board, and now the board's aware of it. Well, so I inquired as to the status of the well, which is now the response we got was Mr. Flynn requested via the Mass DEP regional director for information mm -hmm. on the potential removal of wells right. that had been installed on certain town properties. Mm -hmm. The Bedrock Well, which is at Thornton Burgess, and the OB2 well, which is an observation well, also at Thornton Burgess, 400 feet from the actual water supply, and one installed at the senior center. The one at the senior center say that that's not part of the agreement with Gray Horse. Mm -hmm. So the problem we have is that Gray Horse's application, their Gray Horse permit to withdraw water expires this year in 2022. Mm -hmm. So they're either looking for, so I, I'm just, I'm just interested oh. how it got, you, so you're saying that's because you talked to the senior center director, you contacted them. The, As I just said, the senior center expansion project is limited in scope because of, we can't use that area back there. It's still it's save some money. Why is that, Becky? Well, the, the well is still there. It's still there. There you go. Right. Okay. So, how do the two wells at Thornton Burgess come in? Because the same question. We put those wells in. Oh my, do they still have to stay? It's a standard question. It had nothing to do with. Is there a request to take them out? Is there an expansion for a permit? Oh, I thought those were just two testing wells for the hard test pump. Do they have to stay? Well, they're, they're not. Now two, we have an answer. They're not two testing wells for the hard pump test. They're so testing. Now the ones at the school, they're the not. The ones correct. at the school are for testing nitrates and uh, other, other potential substances. Also, if those wells, if those wells at the school get to a certain level, then they have to report it to the town and they have to stop using water up at the at Great Horse. Correct. So we'll go back important. to the original purpose was because I know we have let the seniors in an expansion thing slide a bit. I was following up with my committee, board over there. What's happening? Do we want to go further? I just want to make it clear. No, me too. All right. Other, what else we got for correspondence? 
Um, we got that. We got the. Uh, oh yeah, I said the. I want to talk about the. Uh, oh, the just list. that the, the senior center, the fire. You know, we, oh, we got to set up a calendar. I thought your list was pretty good. We got to set up a calendar to, at least, address these things. Almost like setting up one meeting per thing or something. Yeah, one meeting per thing, and I don't know if we want to do it, do it put an extra meeting at some point or something like that for some of these because it'll, it'll be lengthy. And the other thing I wanted to add to that too was uh, the advisory committee is always talking about succession planning. So, hmm. you know, I was about to say, I mean, we, have, we know what other issues we have, yeah. but again, I know. So, anyhow, um, with those are the list I would like to mm -hmm. see if we can do. Set them in around the election and uh, town meeting too. Yeah, we got to say 19. start these at the end of March, May after we get through the financial, et cetera. Yeah, well, April 19th, we got advisory, is April 19th the advisory pretty hearing? Yes. That's the hearing. Yeah, I've got to, I've got to get it posted Okay, tomorrow. and then the, then the 9th is the town meeting. So we really only have- 16th is the election. Right. So we're really kind of, so maybe we got to think about this. And basically after, this is our summer, after, summer, after summer, 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 summer focus. Yeah, yeah. because, you know, yeah. because like, like the fire station, it, you know, it's been three years. That, that oh. Same thing with the. I mean, we got at least have a idea what we want to do. Direct. Oh. Direct. But this is kind of our summer list of projects. Yeah. Which um, range of I think it's some of these ones at the bottom to the green point. For me. Okay. Hey, Andrew, you around tomorrow to do a posting? Are you around tomorrow? I can if you need me. <laughs> I'm going to check with Denny and pack it. Okay, that's fine. <coughs> and then just okay, check. if I need yeah. to. Yeah. Thank you. All right. Um, I can report on there was a site meeting last Thursday of the highway department. We had a hard date for typically Bob is at those meetings, and Bob, we certainly, simplify, you know, uh, Mark will give you a report. We have a hard date for delivery of the, near the end of May. and construction done in, at the end of June. We also have dates for, I believe, Mark told me for the finished paving for the water project starting tomorrow. Right. Tomorrow. Mm -hmm. yeah. Tomorrow. Yeah. Well, tomorrow they're starting the driveway slash whatever. The it's a three-day three day drive. Yeah, yeah. Seating. I think there's 70% chance. Is that going to be more? That's all part of the, deal. Part of the deal. Yeah. Right? Yeah. yeah. Kind of like the police radio. I'm not aware of any ah, more okay. expenses related to that project than the ones that you have on the uh, article list there. Okay. Yeah. Oh, well, that doesn't mean. Well, actually, happen. that feeds back into it. I'm so sorry, John's not here. Please call him when we get out. Is there okay, anything Mark. in the water district thing? I know you talked about some upgrades, and I really don't see why that couldn't be part of this project. <clears throat> we are waiting for quotes back from Bob Flag, the water operator, on um, certain things that need to be flushed, maintained, and fixed. And we're hoping to get that tomorrow. Okay. So yeah, we'll, we'll have more to report. Okay. That'd, be a, okay. that'd be a perfect thing for our uh, Selectman's reports, you just gave me pretty much. Pretty much, yeah. Uh, Administrative report. Uh, I still don't have a quote yet from Blackboard Connect, now known as Connect. I can't get, I can't get anybody uh, what to What they, me. what they gave me was a trial subscription. So I went back with her and said, you know, I, I know how to use it. I just need a quote. And she <laughs> said, well, we've been back and forth. I still don't have the quote. So presumably that'll be coming before too long. I do know that Wilbraham is paying around 11,000 and that Rave is in the $4,000 range. So Wilbraham is a bigger town. So I know they, they can figure the cost based on population as well. So I should have recall. it next week. I don't recall him. It being that expensive for us. I don't more. Yeah. No, I don't. I don't think it'll be as expensive right. as it is in Wilbraham. But um, uh, we did get con or Pam did get confirmation from Representative uh, Ash's office that the one hundred thousand dollars that the state owes us uh, for the tree project uh, will come in within the next two weeks. So that's encouraging. It is uh, encouraging, but that was a good catch by Cliff because I think we all were under the assumption had it. that that money was here. Yeah. And Cliff well, we were spending it. <laughs> right. But I mean, there was some talk that that money had been because we followed up at yes. Dana's comment. Yeah. And I swear they said, oh, no, gosh, oh, no, money. But almost a year. But 
Um, I do have a signed contract with the state. On that, yeah. So they're going to have to squirm a lot more to get out from under that if that's what they're doing. But I, I, I think they really, just wasn't there, wasn't there a Senate vote to fund regional transportation at 100 percent? Yeah. <laughs> right, Tom. Where are we at? Uh, just yeah, just record, we so, well, you were all there for the meeting on April 4th with the school uh, officials to uh, discuss their capital request. Uh, I spoke with Carl Marcieri at uh, Maroy today. They think that the project that we are looking at for this building, both for accessibility as well as capital needs, is not quite um, what they do. And they said, are you are you interested in an architectural firm? I said, yes, I know we have a couple already that we've talked with. They did recommend one that I've used before called EDM out in Berkshire County. <laughs> but I think right now we have two. And I want to get a third quote before making a decision. So uh, Main, Street, Main Street Bridge over East Brook Engineering work is completed. I sent you a copy of that today. It, I asked the highway superintendent to review it. Uh, which he did, and it has been submitted to the DER. The Munson Long Meadow Hamden still uh, working at a shared conservation agent next meeting, April the 19th. Ty and Bond preparing a cost estimate for sidewalk design on the south side of Main Street from North Road to Summers Road. That would be widening the existing sidewalk to comply with ADA standards and also extending it in a, that area uh, to the west with, with, where it doesn't exist now. Uh, setting up the application for the community compact fiber optic uh, grant, which I expect to complete tomorrow. Uh, submitted a letter to Senator Lesser's office requesting $250,000 for windows replacement at town hall. I know that that went in and I know that he's going to uh, request it in the budget process. Senior Center planning a booster clinic, a booster clinic this month. I don't have a date yet, no. And then lastly, um, did uh, have a discussion with National Grid and with one of their vendors. Uh, upshot would be that before we decide uh, on, a, on a green communities application, they were going to come into our buildings and at no charge, uh, conduct an audit, an energy audit of our municipal buildings. So, and once we have that, that's the basis for an application. But we haven't, we haven't taken that step. Obviously, uh, selectmen are going to have to agree to that with a with a vote. But at least we'll know once that audit is conducted uh, what kind of projects uh, will be needed. And that's the report, Mr. Chairman. Just on that oh, last yeah. thing there with the, the, the school district in Wilbraham is right. Didn't include their schools, but they, this green trees thing suggests that we right. coordinate with them to include right. the schools now. Correct. So that uh, when Wilbraham joined the program a number of years ago, they did not include the schools buildings that are in their town as part of the project. And what was suggested to me by uh, Mark Rabinsky, who runs the green communities program in Western Mass, is that if we go forward, we should certainly work with Wilbraham to incorporate the school buildings. Mm -hmm. does, it, does, that, does that make them like a semi-green community? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Let's see, what's a semi-green? A little yellowish green? <laughs> pale green. <laughs> They're a pale green community. <laughs> I mean, we actually went through and Tanner as well. We did the light upgrade for Thornton Burgess on our own. And pay for that ability. And you did get the uh, information that Pam received about purchase of the streetlights. Yeah. So it's going to take a while yeah. to get an estimate. What else we got? Next week, the plan. Next week. I thought the dog hearing went very well. It was well handled. And, uh, Cooperation on all parties, really. We're getting good at this, Doug. Unfortunately, so. Mm -hmm. Actually, it wouldn't be a bad idea if you reach out to Shelly. If we had a list of the hearings we had and just a, a recap, have them been closed per her or our recommendations. 
There's a couple of weeks every single week that that one. Yeah, that's, I mean, the Main Street, the, uh, the, the South Road one, things like those. Yeah, for the most part, I think that everything has gone we'll according to, to probably so we're not hearing about it. You're probably right. So, yeah, except for the last one I'm over here. Is that still on ground? Agreed on? I don't know. Well, I don't know. Is that Shall I give us a read? Yeah, yeah. Okay. yeah. Yeah, I'll, sure. I'll send you. I'll send you. That way, they're not outstanding. Yeah, they're wrapped up. I'll send you. Yeah. Okay. Uh, what, is, what is this? What is the notification the board's hand? Oh, this is for polls. Yeah. In the scanner. In the scanner. The conservation commission has to handle this. They have. They have that information. Meanwhile, I have Helen. Uh, John, who's Helen down on Hickory? Shanko. Shanko. Coming and asking about you know all the trees that are in the river. Oh really? Well, I mean that goes back. Billy Bond complained about the same thing. Uh, Don Dorn complained I about know. the same thing. You can't pull a tree up on the river. It's it's which just causes more sedimentation. Yeah. More and now you can't dredge it. Now people they're dredging here. The people's backyard. The biggest complaint we have was uh, River Park, right. and that's why the area flooded back in '05. And, it's something in so bad. It wasn't the Army Corps engineer. Was I think my dad said they were able to do it. Don, you may recall back yeah. in the 60s, they were able to get one through. You know, they're more practical back then. So they just go and do it type thing. Yeah. That was like those there's, things. There's no Facebook that, that nobody knew, Don. <laughs> I, um, I would say it's over here. We a camera. Yeah, yeah. Took that. The Polaroid just logged it. Well. That'll make a motion to adjourn. Yeah, why not? Well, <laughs> adjourn. He's motion to adjourn. We're going to adjourn. Yeah. We're early. We think I'm going to talk about it. Second. Well, let's do it. I'm sorry. Can't talk to each other now. <laughs>